Welcome to Align to Your Design. I'm your host, Beth Davis. Isn't it time to wrap your business around your purpose and bring your greatest work to the world? Each week, join me as we explore various biometric tools, such as human design and hand analysis, and how to use them to fulfill your destiny and align to your design. We will reveal how to do the work you are designed to do rather than what you think you should do. Hey everyone, Beth Davis. I am so happy to be back in action, meeting with extraordinary people who are in the experiment of living their design, bringing their greatest gifts and work to the world, because what else are you going to do with your time? I mean, really. Uh, there is no retire when you're living this experiment. There is no getting away from who you are. This is about engaging with who you are and actualizing who you are and experiencing the soul fulfillment that comes when you live correctly as yourself. So I'm going to tell you about our guest today. You're then going to meet our guest and we're going to have uh, another amazing Align to Your Design conversation. We will have a look at her chart so you can, you can see the chart in relationship to the living human. And then hopefully you'll take this experience and filter it through your own strategy and authority to become more aligned to your own design, which is why I do everything I do, is to help people be more aligned to their true self and to go in the right direction in this world as that true self, bringing their leadership and their gifts to the world. With that, I want to tell you about our guest, and she has quite an amazing history, and I'm actually going to share with you her bio to create a context for this. So our guest today is Dr. Amelia she goes by Amy Hardwick, and she's a licensed clinical psychologist in the state of California. She's worked in the mental health field for almost 30 years. She attended her undergraduate school at the University of Southern California, where she majored in business and psychology. Amy has her master's degree in psychology, psychology from Pepperdine University and her doctorate in clinical psychology from a specialized school for psychology in Los Angeles. Amy's also a clinical nutritionist, CN, and a holistic health coach, certified in clinical nutrition through the Natural Healing Institute. She's also been a minister for over seven years, as well as a sound healer, an energy transformer, and an animal healer, and an animal communicator. Amy has evolved into an eclectic and innovative healer, wearing many different hats that deliver results to her clients, the results that her clients desire. She maintains a very busy, in-demand, integrative online and in-person spiritual coaching and healing practice in Northeast San Diego. She also travels around quite a bit. Amy is a sought out speaker, workshop leader, panelist, and consultant on holistic and integrative psychology as a new emerging treatment approach. She's currently finishing her book, the Healing Puzzle Solved, Following the Inner Path. And she's also has all her tools available for other healers, clinicians, and people to access them in a workshop format for on-demand support and education. Now, during her master's program, she began working at a psychiatric hospital where she worked for three years. And uh, she then worked for the County of Orange in Child Protective Services for seven years and doing private practice for over 20 years years. So she's worked extensively in addiction treatment, doing contract and consulting work, and also as a director of a world-class treatment facility, putting together the most complete integrative and holistic drug and alcohol treatment program ever implemented. And maybe she'll share about that with us today. Amy's clinical experience allowed her extensive training and experience with almost every kind of human suffering our world delivers. And she showed people how this can weaken them and they can lose their way from grace through these difficult experiences. And this allows the suffering, emotional pain, and sometimes physical illness to settle in. And she is very much here on this planet to help you transform your experience from one of suffering to one of fulfillment. Uh, she's worked with all kinds of mood disorders, addictions, eating disorders, chronic and acute illness, grief, and psychotic disorders to relationship 
and life transition problems. She has seen just about everything and is accustomed to working with clients of all ages, cultures, and sexual orientations. She also spent years specializing in the treatment of adolescents and their families, working with adults, geriatrics, and couples from many different cultural and socioeconomic backgrounds. Now, there's a whole lot more I could say about Dr. Hardwick, but I think it would be best to bring her on now, and we're going to dive into a conversation about an a new way you can consider healing yourself and bringing your greatest work to the world. So with that, let's bring on Dr. Amy. Here she comes. Okay. Hi, Beth. Can you see me? Hi, I'm going to bring you on here. Here we go. Okay. There we go. You should be able to start your video and come on on. Hi. Hi, sweetie. Hi, hi, hi. How are you today? I'm awesome. I'm so excited to get to play with you today. Yeah, I'm excited to be with you too. Yeah, likewise. Well, and as you were reading, you know, I always I I actually did a little live yesterday saying that you and I were going to play together. And I talked about how you and I met and you and I met dancing, doing soul motion, you know, which is, you know, one of the many ways to, you know, through movement to get at your stuff. Right. We were at Esalen. Yeah. I remember we were sitting at a dinner table. Yeah. You and I, and I think it was about 2004. So you and I have known each other years now. Yeah. Quite a long time. That's a very, very, very long time. It really is. You know, and it's interesting that we're here now because when I met you, I was really, I was really in it and I'm kind of in it again here now. And that's one of the things that people will learn about me is I'm always really authentic about who I am, what I'm doing you know, and as in human design as a generator, you're really supposed to be out there in the world being your most authentic self, and then things bump into you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's really how I've come to practice is, is, is really through working on me. Absolutely. So, so let me ask you something. Um, I have some notes here. So first of all, how would you describe today the essence of the psychological work you do with people? Well, I mean, I call myself a holistic psychologist and I know we have on Instagram, we have the holistic psychologist and I love the stuff she puts out, but the truth is, is she's not actually holistic. You know, I see, and a lot of times when people hear the word holistic, Beth, they think now all natural, woo woo wee, but really holistic means whole. It means treating the whole person. And it's also about getting at the root cause. So I practice by, I want to know, I want to get at the root, because I believe, I truly believe that we can be this enlightened being, this whole and healed, fully healthy, never sick, vibrant, amazing being. You know, I mean, I even believe that you can get to the point where you can live off the sun and breatharian and mm-hmm. and just this amazing consciousness from that energy. I mean, it would take a long time to get there, but I believe in treating the whole person. So, you know, you've got to get at traumas, all the different ways in which trauma has programmed your nervous system, your body that's in your cells. You've got to get at all, you know, all the functional medicine stuff. You know, if you've got adrenal problems, if you've got heavy metal poisoning, you've got to deal with the health. You've got to deal with detoxing. You've got to deal with the toxic uh, thoughts and you've got to deal with your energy body too and your spirit, Mm -hmm. you know, and most clinicians are not treating the whole person. And we're certainly not, you know, everyone always asks, how did you get here? Well, I got here how a lot of clinicians uh, get here is I came from a very dysfunctional family. And I mean, to the point of when I was 20, I was so tired of my family's dysfunction. I was ready to check out, but really I just wanted help. And I ended up in a psych hospital and uh, and I, uh, immediately, and this is in my design as well. I learned very quickly that what they were doing there, just to, even at 20, wasn't helping Mm. and everyone was miserable. I can remember running group because there wasn't even really staff and certainly not competent staff. And, and, and I really realized like, oh my God, I've been begging for help from my family. And if this is the help that I'm getting, I'm in trouble. So I knew to get out of, out of there. I mean, I don't even know if I was there 48 hours and I did finally start to get, um, uh, see a psychologist. And the thing was, Beth, is she didn't have anything to actually help me. Right. And and that really sparked a thing in me really realizing that there wasn't a lot. And so I kind of ended up going on a more of a spiritual kind of quest. I ended up after I graduated from SC and I got a business job in sales and then I quit. I just quit. After three months, I thought this is not what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I announced I was moving home and I was and I was going to Fiji, New Zealand and Australia. I was at a kegger in Newport Beach. And I just all of a sudden said that it sprung 
simply from innate intelligence. And I responded to what I created. And I did. I moved home to my parents. I got three jobs and I made it to Australia, New Zealand and, and, and Fiji. And that really sparked a new me and me really learning and growing. And And then I ended up uh, moving to Hawaii and I was doing real estate stuff and still trying to really work with the business, but I'd always loved psychology. And in Hawaii is really where it was almost like this big surge of transformation where I just decided to, that I was going to go back to school, Uh you know? And so I moved back to Southern California and a lot of my friends from SC were making a lot of money by then. I mean, I had girlfriends that were making three, four hundred thousand dollars a year. And here I was going back to school. I'm like making ten dollars an hour as a psych tech, you know, but my, you know, and my friends are buying houses in Laguna Beach and making really good money. And, you know, but it was what I wanted to do. But what I learned in school right away was that because I, I, I instantly started working in the field while I was going to school which made all the difference. I mean, I always had my hand up in school because the DSM was live. Um, But I learned very quickly because I was working in the field while I was learning that what they were teaching us was not even cutting the mustard. I had learned that from my own therapy. Mm -hmm. I can remember at 20 looking at the psychologist I was seeing and she was just like, you've got to stop smoking pot. I go, really? Do you have something for the anxiety other than prescription drugs? or really heavy, gross stuff. Are you going to help me sleep at night? And she had nothing. I love Nancy. And I learned a lot of things about dynamics and we can understand what's wrong with us. We don't have enough to do about it. Uh. And so I was already looking for spirituality questions. I always joke that I was a card carrying atheist when I was eight, because I was watching what was being offered in the religions around me which, you know, which is, you know, white girl from Orange County, which is, you know, going to be, you know, Christianity. But the people, I mean, it didn't make sense to me. And I wasn't seeing it improve people's lives, you know, but what the one thing that I learned in my 20s, and when I was in Hawaii was that I was deeply depressed. And so there must be something that I was separated, I started doing yoga, I found Tibetan Buddhism and started studying Dzogchen. This all happened in my 20s, which is a huge transformational phase. People don't understand that in your 20s is a huge developmental phase of where you're truly trying out who you are. No one should get married or make any big commitments Mm -hmm. until they're 30. Their frontal lobe is uh, often isn't, we say 25, it's 30. Mm -hmm. You don't know who you are until then. And I was Mm -hmm. really doing that in my 20s. But what I really figured out was that psychology was really not helping. And I was really uh, focused on finding ways to help people. And then in 2002, I got extremely, extremely sick. And so I got introduced to the fact that, you know, United States medical system, allopathic medicine, that I was a huge cheerleader of, you know, because of the schools I went to and my degrees and a lot of our belief systems are built on ego systems. But let me tell you, they abandoned me and did not have anything to help me. Mm. So I had severe mold poisoning and mycotoxin poisoning. The head of Scripps and Allergy and Immunology said that I was going to die at the, I was probably going to die at the very least. I would lead medical care for the rest of my life. And my attorneys at the time, while I was in a a horrifying divorce, um, decided not to request the opposite medical thing. So I never had the money to be able to help myself. So I had to do it myself. So I had to figure out how to heal myself. The one thing with, and I know everyone in your your field understands about your re-diagnosis. And when that happened, the one thing that made me feel better is I know you have walked this path as I have as well with healing with cancer, just like I've had to do with mold. I always joke, you don't get a lot of whole, a lot of support for that. And it's particularly 20 years ago. Right. So, you know, I've had times where I've had money to help myself heal. And I've had times that I haven't. The one thing that I noticed right away was, you know, when I was sick with the mold, the, the, I call him Darth Vader, that, you know, notorious ex-husband and all this chaos in my life was that no one could help me. One of the best psychologists I knew of sent me to a psychic for energy healing. And so I went on a quest when yeah. I had all of allopathic medicine, not helping me right. because they didn't know how to heal mold. I mean, I was going to the best of the best. It wasn't like I was in a rural area. I I lived in Laguna Beach, Newport Beach, where the best medical care in all of the United States is. 
and they were failing me left and right, Beth. So I really learned that not only psychology wasn't helping, mainstream medicine wasn't either. So I went about figuring out how to heal myself. And in that, I came up with a lot of processes to be able to help people heal. I really learned that trauma is really the root cause of everything. It upsets everyone when I say that. We all want it to be something we've eaten. We all want it to be a toxin. We all want it to be that. But Candace Pert, who, uh, God rest her soul, was this close to finding the cure for um, AIDS, and she magically had a heart attack, but she's in what the bleep do we know? And she actually did the science that Chopra was talking about in the eighties and nineties, that Chopra really had this feeling that our emotions, that there was a, an emotional cause to what drives it. It's what, uh, you know, the, uh, the brain surgeon neurologist, Dr. Hammer figured with German new medicine that, you know, that the root cause of all cancer are these emotional concepts, these great stresses that happen. Candace proved that it's stored in our cells. And once your cells are, are compromised with an emotional problem, your receptor sites are open for disease and pathogens and all kinds of stuff to happen. And so I know, but, but how do we get at that? We're so used to going to a therapist and talking about everything and talking about everything, but what are we going to do about it? And so when people come to me now, I don't want I have ways to track what their traumas are, where they don't have to give me a lot. I get the basics of their history, but I don't want you to go through your trauma and tell me about it. I want to be able to get at the root cause of it by doing regression work, which is really the best stuff you can do. So I have big processes that I do with that. I have soul fragment work that's much smaller that if anyone knows uh, inner family systems, everyone kept asking me about, they're like, you talk in the same legumes as Schwartz. I'm like, well, because he figured out was seeing the same things I did. And so I have a lot of processes to do work with soul fragments because we have these that are much shorter. And once I start teaching people how to do that work, you can kind of go inside and say, I'm triggered with anger right now. I, I want that part of me that's feeling hurt and you can work with it within yourself. I have processes that I've made up where you do like a prayer and then you do uh, EFT and I teach people how to do EFT, but then affirmation work. It's actually a whole process that I just made up um, that once I teach you how to do it, you have a tool to work on your trauma as much as you want to work on it or as little as you want or when you're in crisis. Mm. Because that's the thing I want to give people are tools. You know, there's color therapy I do. All the energetic work I do is phenomenal because a lot of times you can get at the traumas, but I do believe in outside energies and forces and maybe they're just a bunch of dense, dense traumas that maybe look like it's become an entity. I don't care what you want to call it, but there is energetic stuff. And once you get rid of it, I mean, I always joke that the hocus pocus clearing work I do, most of my clients, that's what they're like, that makes me feel better the fastest. And a lot of mm. times I'll clear people just to see, okay, we've got the energy stuff out. So what's really here? Are you in your head all the time with negative thinking? I developed uh, cognitive work. I was one of the very, the treatment center I ran was the very first work that Byron Katie, the work was ever uh, done at and her and Stephen uh, Mitchell, her husband who wrote the all the transformations for the I Ching. She was so excited. It was in treatment. And this was in 2007. It was the first treatment center that the work was done in. But I've been doing Katie's work for so long. I have pre-questions to Katie's questions. I've changed how the work is done because you got to get this under control. You got to mm -hmm. get the negative emotions and traumas out. I mean, that's the root cause of your ego. Your ego is developed out of trauma because if not, you're whole and healed and and nothing really infiltrates you and you don't take anything personal. Right. So I have lots and lots of processes so, that I do to get the, the emotional stuff out, you know, work with your thoughts and your thinking, teaching people how to eat nutritionally. I'm also one of the few people that are trained in balancing your brain chemistry with vitamins, minerals, and, and amino acids, because the one thing that they, they don't tell you is they actually do not teach brain chemistry correct in medical school or psychology graduate school. No way ever. Will an SSRI ever cause you to make new serotonin? So let's say you're super, super, super deficient. All the recycling in the world isn't going to help you. And all of that stuff comes with major, major, major side effects. And really like food cra cravings that you're having, you're really craving brain chemistry. And you can tell what you're deficient in from your food craving. So I have extensive training in, um, in uh, balancing your brain chemistry with vitamins, minerals, and amino acids. And in fact, one of the only reasons I agreed to go to Altamira to help them with their treatment program, and I always joke that I'm so lucky that I got to do that. 
because I was very, very passionate about all this stuff I created and made up, but I wanted to apply it. I wanted it to see if it could work. And that's the one thing that I got to do is I said I would only go if I had someone that was there to do IV amino acid therapy because it changes everything in addiction treatment. Could you imagine not going through withdrawals? Mm. Why are we not treating that way? If the minute someone comes into treatment, they do seven to 10 days of IV amino acid treatment, you come off, you have no withdrawal symptoms anymore. Any drugs you're having to come off of, you come off naturally. And then all of your brain comes online and you have all the chemicals to actually do the work that you need to do in therapy. But yeah, we're not practicing that way in the United States. But I got to for about six months, I mm-hmm. had a functional medicine doctor. I had people doing that. I had uh, clean food, good diet, chefs. I was getting to do trauma work. I was getting to do clearing work. They were out in nature. They were getting their thoughts online. And guess what? Most of those people are still sober today. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And so, And it's the same with cancer treatment. Right. You know? I, I would prefer to treat cancer patients more than anyone in the world because they're highly motivated. Most people just want to take a pill or have someone hocus pocus it away. But if we really want to evolve, you got to do the work. You got to get the bad stuff out and get good stuff back in and change your behaviors and your patterns. And human design can really help you with that too, of knowing who you are and how to start being in the world to your benefit. Is that a, that's a lot, but. No, it's, it's beautiful. So Um, What would you say at this point in your journey, do you see as the fundamental formula for healing and evolution in the individual? First and foremost, you've got to deal with trauma. And a lot of people don't think that they have trauma because maybe they weren't raped. I mean, but come on, three out of four people, men and women have some form of, of sexual trauma. They just do, whether you know it or not. Uh When the teacher called on you and you didn't have the answer that moment when you were eight, that's and you were humiliated in class that stays in your body. That's trauma. When your dad was away for business and you didn't understand why that's trauma. When you didn't get to go to grandma's funeral and you know, that's trauma. When your first pet died and it was never resolved, that's trauma. All that stuff stays and it informs our experience and our lens most of us are seen through our trauma filters. I always joke that I don't actually like to do couples therapy because for the most part, I can see people individually. We can do some really intense, deep guided work, get their thoughts and their thinking, stop blaming and projecting on their partners, deal with their own stuff. A lot of their trauma falls away and they're interacting with their partner differently automatically without ever having to do anything. Either that or the relationship falls away because the only reason you came together was to push each other's buttons and blow it all up. And if you heal, you don't have any reason to be with that person anymore, or you move forward in a really beautiful way. So the formula, and I mean, and people don't understand, you got to detox and be eating decently these days. It's how all of your brain chemistry is, uh, is built. The reason everybody is so out of it is you don't have the chemicals, whether it's stress chemicals from your adrenal glands, your hormones, or your brain chemistry, because there's no food in our food anymore. And so if there's no food in our food anymore, then you don't have the chemistry to, to function. Mm. And so you got to get the bad emotional toxins out. You got to put good coping stuff back in. You've got to get the chemical toxins by doing saunas or cleanses or, I mean, and really get it out and you got to start eating better. And I mean, a lot of times people say, oh, you just need to change your diet and you're naturally cleansed. No, you cannot. There's a really amazing study, 12 Americans, it shows how in our tissues, it's about uh, studying uh, the fecal cords from babies. This came out like 18 years ago, 17, 18 years ago, that all the, 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 the cords from these children that were not in any big industrial areas all had like the DDT and all these chemicals from their moms because the mom is just trying to get all the chemicals into tissues and they see the fetus as that. So children are coming in chemically compromised. So I'm sorry, everybody needs to detox. You do. All those chemicals are causing insomnia, anxiety, depression. And once you start getting the crap out, you're like, oh my God, I can think again and I feel better. And then you've got to get good nutrition in. So you have adrenal hormones, sex hormones, brain chemistry. So if if someone came to you, let's say a, 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 a young mother came to you, 
She just had a baby. The baby's okay, but she's got, say, postpartum depression. How would you work with this person? Like, what do you do when you work with someone? What might be the process that you take her through? Well, when anybody comes to see me, I pretty much, I mean, I have a formula. I've been kind of practicing this way for a really long time. And the first time anybody comes to see me, of course, you've got forms and this and that, but I do a really interesting thing that Gilbert Renald taught me. He's a she just uh, total recall healing, um, total biology, which is the offshoot from German new medicine. And Gilbert taught me some interesting things to it. He taught me how to track people's traumas. So I actually, and it's, I, I actually, I tell the story. I had a woman one time that had never told anybody about her abuse and it scared her so much that she had hardly said hi to me. Uh huh. And I said, what happened when you were six? So what it is, is I do this thing where I ask you what your birthday is. And I have to tell everyone it's not an astrological woo woo -wee thing. It's about biological cycles in your cells. So zero to the time you moved out of your parents' house is like your first full biological life cycle. And there's something in your body that when you move out and you become independent, it's like you go back to zero. And so we mm. repeat all the same traumas. So if I have someone that's in their fourth life cycle and they got traumatized, with, I mean, I mean, if it's okay for me and you to say it, yeah, you and I, the way we reconnected yes. is, uh, like a few, a couple, few months ago is I said, give me five minutes. And I did that. And I said, work on this. And you said, holy fucking shit. That's, that's it. Cause I, I mean, and I mean, I'm doing it with me right now too. I'm in yeah. a, I'm in a, I mean, I'm like, are you kidding me? How is my life blown up? And I've gone back and I've looked at what is it that I have missed that I've worked on so much? And there was issues with my mom and my and my sisters. And I made a wrong choice, like a human design wrong choice. And kaboom. And so I'm working on all of it again. And and I th say, thank God I have the skills. Uh -huh. Yeah. One of the things about, I've discovered about correct decisions is that it may not look the way we want it to look. And yet there can be a soul fulfillment in it a lack of resistance to it when it's really guiding us towards our, our greater expression. Yeah. So to continue, so I, I do that right away. And right then and there, that just, we blow through so much history because I get it what the root is right away, you know? And I can say, well, because you all have traumas at each life cycle, you know? So it'll be like that. And I'll say like, look, can you see that there's an emotional theme here that you keep repeating? It won't be the exact same thing. I was at a Dr. Hitt's cancer clinic in uh, Tijuana because I was there for my moldy everything stuff. But I'm surrounded by cancer patients and the guy next to me who I knew wasn't going to be with us much longer in the Barca lounge wanted to know, wanted to know, he goes, what do you do? And I said, I work as a holistic psychologist and I get at the root cause. And he goes, why? Well, I wanted to know the cancer. So I, I said, when's your birthday? And we did it right then and there. And I said, what happened here? What happened here? And he broke into tears and we did. And he could see, we could see each huge event that he had never actually dealt with that built on and then finally it manifested physically. If it's, and so I like it when I have people that have physical things, because when you focus on those, that's where a lot of the material is, yeah. you know, and I do things like advanced cell training now, you know, which is one of the best treatments for Lyme and it's really weird work, but I mean, there's spiritual stuff in that there's, there's physical healing, parasites, all kinds of, there's over 7,000 pages of code. They actually, I probably would have died of, of COVID if uh, Gary had not written code for it because my lungs were seizing up and mm. I was going to have to go to the, um, and they would have put me on a vent because it was March of 2020. But I saw that Gary wrote code and it cleared it up for me. And I mean, there's so many things I do. My friend Jameson, who owns all the Newport Academies, he, his wife wanted to meet me because she'd been hearing about, you know, it's like I'm a mad scientist because I really do. I've been, and I've been doing this stuff since, you know, the beginnings of 2000s and most people are just starting to do it now. So you might be able to point to that in my human design where I am. I'm mm -hmm. always ahead of everyone. I have a slide when I present that I made in 2007 and it has Einstein and crazy people. And when you're, when you're four steps ahead of everyone, you're a lunatic. When you're one or two, you're a genius. <laughs> right. You even said it to me. Yeah. Because I would go on and on about this stuff at Esalen in the early 2000s. And I do, I sound a little nuts, especially when it wasn't normal. It's more normal now. Mm -hmm. So I also have to, and it's in my design somewhere. I also have to be able to take being the oddball, being the innovator, being the one that mutates everything. Because that's my job. It's my job to mutate psychology. Yeah. You know, but the three, five, the heretics were also paranoid that, I mean, I wrote my 
book proposal for the healing puzzle solved. I'm going to, in 2009, people, let's just all laugh at me that you just said that I'm supposed to be finishing it. And I am. And I probably made enough mistakes to really get it out there and just be done with it. You know, because people need courses. We need to be retraining clinicians. You know, a lot of your people, I mean, to find a dis- decent therapist that's licensed, mm-hmm. you know, because coaches are doing stuff, but they get into stuff that all the time, you know, domestic violence, suicidality. I just had a beloved friend of mine that's been a coach that does the guided work that I do, because by the way, the guided work that I do, and I've changed it, it's what all the German new medicine uh, people send people to do when just bringing into your conscious awareness of what the root cause of things is. I mean, it's the most phenomenal work that there is. And when I do energetic clearing or I do other little things when I come back to doing that work it just changes everything your emotions are really the root cause and Mm -hmm. no one has had tools that actually work so most people don't know what I'm talking about I have that problem a lot yeah so what what would you say has been one of your biggest successes like can you tell us a, a quick story about well I mean I'm supposed to be dead so many times over you know and I'm not and my successes and and it and I learned that this is in my design too and I just was listening to the 41st gene key and so that's in my whatever my uh, that I'm what, what I'm the right arm of the cross of the unexpected. And so it's 4131 something something. Yeah, but we'll look 40, at it in a minute. Yeah, the 41 says it. It's not about me. I've already I know my incarnational history. You don't you can't pull from so many modalities and be able to talk about all the th- I mean, my, all of my friends that are physicians are like, dude, you should have gone to medical school. I'm like, I'm not a medical doctor. I can't, you know, I I have all my little disclaimers that I say, but I I know so many things about so many big bodies of work because I've done it all before. Mm -hmm. And so now it's about the culmination of things. Does that, and that's in the 41st jinky in my right, my cross. Yeah. Yeah. It's right there. It's not about me. I joke that, um, I was, um, the one thing you didn't want to talk about uh, going into COVID was 5g and Jamie Ike had bamboozled me into a podcast and didn't tell me he was the son of David Ike. Right. In the right. fall of 2019. It's a funny story. Jamie, I talk about this. Jamie knows. Jamie didn't tell me who his dad was and he hid it from me. Okay. Cause they hadn't really started iconic. They were just starting it. This is a perfect example. They were just starting iconic. And I, and I was working with Betsy Chase who did what the belief Betsy was coaching me. We were going to finally get my work filmed and out there. Okay. This was case okay, 2023. We might want to find the the procrastination gate. And so this kid just emails me and says he wants to put me in a podcast. And I'm like, okay, I told Betsy I would start marketing. I would start agreeing to do stuff. This is how you've gotten me here today because I don't I don't like the attention because it's not about me. Right. And so what happened is right before my podcast, I found out who he was. And there's a lot of things about me that are super interesting. Everyone always wants me to write my memoir. We're not talking about that today. I'm like. And the espionage gate, it's because I have the espionage mm-hmm. gate. Like everyone's like, I, I am in the middle of everything all the time uh, of like really big things. And um, aside from the psychology. So I knew that I could not be dealing with Jamie, like with the people that I know and the things that I was dealing with at the time, which are kind of espionage like. And so I, but I couldn't back out of it. So we went through and it was a great interview and a podcast, but, and I thought, Phew. and I told the person that I could you were going to have a heart attack that I was being interviewed by Jamie Ike's son. This is fun stories because that's also in my human design that I teach through stories. And so I thought it was over, but then Jamie started asking me to be in a movie about 5g. And I'm like, Jamie, I'm a psychologist. I'm not a tech person. He couldn't get anyone because David Ike is much more. People are listening to him much more now from the last three years, but he was still a career killing pariah. And what had happened is I'm in Emotion 2.0 and Frazier, who made that movie, knows that I know about a lot of what people call conspiracy theories, knows that I know about energetic and that I deal with those. And so I blame Frazier. (laughs) Frazier told Jamie that I would help him. And Jamie kept asking me. And so because I do energy and psychic stuff as well, um, guidance kept telling me that I was supposed to help him. Now that's my purpose. It's not about me. I've never wanted to be famous. Okay. This is the third podcast I've ever done. The two other ones I've ever done, I got put in documentaries after them. Okay. Right. But I was supposed to help Jamie. Jamie had just gotten married. Okay. Him and Beth got pregnant right out the shoot. 
Okay. So he's, and his dad asked him to join Iconic. And once he had, Beth was pregnant, he felt a duty to join the family business to change the world. And all guidance, can I, can I tell guidance? I'm like sitting here talking to my guides. I'm like, are you kidding me? I can't be in a movie. And then it got worse because it was about 5G and going into COVID. What's the one thing you couldn't talk? And people, the symptoms of 5G and technology and, and EMF sickness are the same as COVID, which is why you couldn't talk about it. And so, but I was supposed to help him. And I gave Jamie the confidence because I said yes, and I helped him with multiple things at that time that was very important for him to have someone believe in him and support him. And Iconic is a huge platform. They produced many, Jamie made so many movies since then. Yes. So many series, so many alternative of everything. Because my purpose, it wasn't about me. It wasn't about me being in the movie. It wasn't about my work. It wasn't about me. It was about that I was supposed to help Jamie. Mm -hmm. And that is my role. And when I understand that, and maybe I'm not getting the big whatever or the big this or that, that's not my role anymore. My role is foundational. And I know that. And I know that from my design, it's not about me. That's the 41st key. You know, that's Mm -hmm. that 41st thing. That's what all DNA is built off of. It's built off of my genetics because I'm the foundation. I've been the famous person. I've been the mover and shaker before. I'm here to support those people now. It's not about me. And and, And it was never about me. And Jamie, because I helped him has gone on to do something great. And it's not about me. And I have a lot of clients that I think, oh my God, they're making way more money than I am now. Because my role was to teach them how to go and be who they're meant to be and to make a lot of money. And if I'm getting triggered like that, that's just work for me to do because my role is to have people that are meant to be movers and shakers. And I make, I, we clear out all their crap and we show them who they really are. And I send them out in the world. And when they're famous and when they're thriving, when, when they're huge influencers, that's my job. It's not mm. about me. You're like the but power behind the throne. Yeah. But, wait, but you need to know that because. If right. You're you not, do. You're you all, do need to know that. Yeah. But if you don't know that you're all butthurt and your trauma. Yeah. Oh, because you get into, I'm a big, huge victim and why not me? And blah, 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 blah. But like the Enneagram, human design, gene keys, you need to understand yourself. Right. Especially. And that's why going to a coach or going to a therapist, you need someone to call you on your bullshit. I am yeah. not the person to come to if you don't want the truth because right. I'm not even fun about it I'm not even tactful a lot no, neither time. am I not if they're not if they're asking for it let's just get to it so, yeah, so on I, that note let's yeah, yeah. let's have a look let's, at your chart yeah 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 everyone's okay. kind of got the flavor of me yeah yeah let's let's have a look at your chart with our with our um remaining time here all right I'm going to bring up your chart this is fun put it all together well because I mean you can you can get me to talk I mean because because of all the things that I do and I mean I haven't even shared so many things I think I mentioned Jameson introducing me to Heather once and uh, he, she goes well what do you do and I went and I tried to go through the list and I go I think that's it is that it I looked at Jameson and they both laughed at me because it was so much more than any clinician does. And it just pisses me off because everyone needs to be practicing like I do. Yeah, well, you're you're going to be getting this word out to more and more and more people. We need a functional psychology school like they develop functional medicine. And that's what I need to do. Well, let's have a look here. Let's let's look at the primary health system. Okay, well, your... you asked me what we want to look at. My big issue is yeah. I, it's 14 sick. Why do I not have the funding funding to start that functional medicine school yet? All right, well, let's That's, look at that. Finances are probably my, my frustration, but look at my overall chart. But I wanted to get that because you said yeah. you were going to ask me what I'm struggling with right now. Yeah. So, the, so the funding for your school. All right. So let's just look, I want to look here at the variable, which I haven't talked a lot about on this podcast. Um, and Ooh, the variable, I don't even know about that. I'm excited. I'm learning. Yeah, so too. this is the, these arrows reveal the primary health system, PHS of human design. And we're dealing with uh, color beneath the line in the DNA. So I won't go into a big, long explanation, but suffice to say, you've got your diet or determination here is a left arrow and it's a two color. So this is about how you need to eat. You're the person that actually needs to eat organic, local, regular, you know, my diet, I can pretty much live off Taco Bell. It's, it's not going to, as long as I'm doing something, I, I mean, I don't live off Taco Bell, but you know, once in a while. So you um, and I've talked about this before. I like to go to farmer's markets. 
Yes. And so your diet is about that local food because that's where you draw the nutrition from and the energy from for your unique system. Now, one of the things to know about the primary health system is that if we do not get the diet and the environment correct, our aura isn't protected and then it begins to deteriorate. The thing that's interesting is when people are in their heads, they're trying to follow other people's formulas, other people's diets, other people's conditions and circumstances, and this doesn't work. Now, in your environment, your environment is caves, and which is a cave is like an enclosed space. So you're, you're, you're meant to sort of move from your office to your home to the car, like to be safe. It's about security in your environment. It's very, very important to you. And you're meant to be relaxed in your environment with a right arrow. So if someone has a left arrow, like I do, I need to be very, very active, physically active in my environment or else it's not correct for me. And so I've noticed the times in my life where I have gotten sick, I can trace it right back to being in the incorrect environment, the incorrect environment. Working on the trauma definitely helps. And you combine that with the correct environment and the aura starts to strengthen. So for you, you're more designed to be a bit of a couch potato, to be very chill, to be very relaxed in your environment. It doesn't mean you don't do anything, but it's going to be quietly reading, working quietly one-to-one with a client. You know, the, the, the things flow to you. You don't have to go out and get it. It's not even healthy for you. You're meant to I be- like- I like smaller enclosed spaces. It makes me feel safe. My parents had a big house growing up with tons of windows. I was terrified all the time in that big mansion with windows. Yeah, yeah, that's. I actually did a post on my cat yesterday or the day before because snow's been burrowing, and she's a generator. I don't know if people know that you can do human design for your cats. I actually paid for a reading for my cats, and she's a generator like I am, and I and I've been noticing what she's doing. She's been creating caves to make herself feel safe. And I, I, I joked that I bet that her space is cave as well, yeah. like mine. Yeah, yeah. Because we do. Yeah. And the thing is, so we have design internal, the position of the sun and the earth 88 days before you're born when the soul crystal comes in and the soul crystal organizes the building of the physical body, right? And then the diet and environment becomes really critical at age 30. You're absolutely right. I mean, up until then, If a child is supported in the right environment, right? Like if if your parents had given you a little room with one door and, and, you know, the windows were curtained, you would have felt much safer. Um, And then the child needs to be fed correctly. But at age 30, this is when it becomes critical that we're eating correctly and we're in the right environment to to protect our aura. So, um, And I wasn't in the right environment when I was 30, the studio that I was living in. And it's weird. I had a weird social media exchange with the guy I shared a wall with. And I was like, why is this asshole still on my face? Because I wasn't in a safe space when I was 30, which led to a very severe illness later on. Right. Boom. Yeah, boom. So funny that I talked to him yesterday. See, yeah. but spot on to, to give us an example of how true it is. My environment was, it was very out in the open. It had bad people around it and it was physically uh, toxic. Yeah, that's and no it good led for you. To, it, it led to a horrible illness. Now At here's 30- what, here's what's supposed to happen in your environment, in the nodes, because the nodes The nodes are where the life is lived out in the node, nodes of the moon in our environment. So we have internal environment, like the environment we live in. So our internal, our internal body is our diet, what we take in. And then it, then the environment that we find ourselves living in protects the body. So primary health system and the life is lived on the nodes. And then on the personality side, which we won't get into, it's about the mind. So in your environment, right? Passive caves. You are here. Well, you came in South Node until age 43. This is still in you. The energetic of being the innovator creator in the community, which you've described so innovative, creating, 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 creating to benefit the community. At age 43, the North Node comes online to take all of this creativity. And what you're here to do is help gate to point humanity in a direction that actually allows people to live in sustainable communities. So the main theme of your environment is how do we, we take humanity in a better direction so we live in sustainable communities 
that nourish us, that activate our creativity. So it's like you are here to help point people very much in the direction of their creativity. It's like being a creativity expert. Well, and, and what's so interesting about yeah. everything that we've talked about right now, I don't want to throw you off, but just so everybody knows, I just went through the last three years of being in a not correct living environment that was extremely toxic. I really prayed to God and I was evicted in a very violent way from this place that wasn't safe. Right. I only started feeling better when I went on a crystal buying binge and I made it so it was like inner earth. I kid you not, people. It's like an art installation. Yeah. You can, I'm like, I mean, you like people were like, oh my God, like it was a crystal cave. And once I made my cave, I started feeling better. And the minute I was ejected in the worst way, life explosion possible out of this place, I'm now getting better and I'm living in a place that is more community. I'm connecting with artists in the area. I'm connecting with, with it, it, it's coming yeah. together. I'm getting it's beautiful. I'm, I'm, I'm recorrecting and it's rebuilding. And if you can't get in your head about how this isn't supposed to be happening, well, guess what? It's fucking happening. And, um, you, exactly. We, we, the three five gets very good at. Oh well, wow! Everything just blew up. It is what it is, and then you go from there. And well, that's here's the, the thing. Here's the thing about your journey. So, sorry, to interrupt. The, yeah. The, so you lead with the third line. You know, the profile is the costume to do our purpose. So. A lot of your life is trial and error so that you can be the heretic to the masses. Like the ultimate culmination of your right angle cross of the unexpected is bringing what doesn't work and what does work to the masses in a heretical way, which you're already doing. And being brave enough to look like the fool doing it, which I do. I mean, we saw that with the with the the pandemic. And I wasn't a COVID denier because I mean I was sick as the dog in February of 2020. I was, no, this is how it needs to go so we don't destroy ourselves. And That's I was right. willing to stand up and do it. And and then yeah. and then I'm like, okay, now how do we fix that? You know, how do we fix what went wrong? Let's now do something right. I'm the solution. I don't continue blowing things up. Right. Well, and here's what's interesting. Your mind's motivation is fear. And I want to explain what this means. So the way your mind, you have a, you have a right mind internal. And so the themes are you take in gate 41 energy, which is the recognition of a new experience. But here's what's interesting. Gate 41, which is the start code on, is going through a massive mutation. So, which is what I am. I'm 14 too. I'm the mutator. I'm the keeper of the keys. You are. You're the keeper of the keys with line three. So you're teaching us how to deal with the mutation and you are a voice for influence to share about how to handle the mutation. So that's essentially what your persona is about. The whole thing with the mind is it isn't to figure out our own life. It's to be able to share our knowledge or outer authority with the other so that people can filter it through their own strategy and authority and grow. So essentially, every human being is here to teach from their unique perspective through whatever their work is to share their unique frame with the other so that we all grow. It isn't like one person has better information or is the better teacher than someone else. It's a circle, not a hierarchy. But ultimately, so many people are incorrect. They're not in the right diet. They're not in the right environment. They're not with the correct people. They're not doing the correct work. They can't even get to their unique perspective to share it because their body's so compromised. So what you, your motivation, fear, first, it's dealing with your own fears. However, it's also when you speak to others, it's helping them deal with their fears. You have the kind of mind that wants to take on all the things, understand all the things. You're not meant to get out of anything. You're meant to bring understanding to all the fears that cross your path, right? That's and then exactly, you, that's exactly it. I mean, I you meditate make people, on it. You like, I make people with horrible, horrible that have been told they're incurable, that this can't happen, that you're never going to get pregnant, that the, the, all this. And I do so many things. I'm like, we'll fucking figure it out. I have yep. so many solutions. That's right. And what I've been trying to teach everybody is we are all so uniquely different. And, and, and it's the same with me when I'm working on something. Sometimes I need to run advanced cell training codes and then I can do a guided process and then a cleanse and then that'll do it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I need to work with some uh, with my thoughts and some tapping and I'm good. Maybe I need to do an energy clearing. But at different times along my path, different things work and then they shake something loose and everybody's like that. What works for me is not going to work for someone else who hasn't even started healing yet right that's why i keep having to make up new stuff because there's a lot people there is and a lot now oh. here's the thing 
it's all your, locked in in weird ways too. Your transference is need. So the way you can tell if your mind's going off to the wrong place is you become focused on getting your needs met. That's not correct for you. Your focus in life is to be using your mind to help others face their fears. And as long as you're focused on that, your whole life works. The minute you start self-focusing on what do I need? What do I need? What do I need? What do I need? It, it like it, everything starts to fall apart for you. Oh, that's a really good tip. I mean, and I've had a lot of human design readings because I did a lot of this and was it 2020, 2021? I was really like, I needed to. Yeah. And so I did. I had big, a lot of readings from big readers and no one has explained that to me. Well, my, see, when I listen to someone, I, I, I'm, I'm like, what is the most important thing I could share with you and with the audience, right? In terms of who you are. And so you are meant to be in this protected cave, being chill, doing your thing. Your your environment needs its outer vision. So it needs to be um, visually stimulating your environment like it filled like it is filled with art and color and you need things to focus on externally to make your mind healthy. You shouldn't live in a spare open space. It needs to be a tight cave. Oh, it's and it visually has to have style. It and it's going to have style. Design yep. is a big thing with me. It the is. Artistic. It really, the really aesthetic. is. It's, it's the same with day, you know, dating when I used to do that. You know, I'm very aesthetic. I'm very visual. Yep. That explains that. Like, yep. I like pretty men. Kill me. Well, I, who doesn't? Anyway, I, I mean, maybe there are some people that don't like pretty men. But anyway, so no, you have are. right angle cross of the unexpected. Let's just finish with this today. So you, your brand is to be the strategist to help people deal with the mutation, the recognition that there's a vast mutation happening both on the collective tribal and individual level. You're then the voice that brings the how, just like you are here. Like you, you're here to be a voice of influence in this world and it's unexpected. So you never really know where it's gonna crop up, but people are always looking to you for your influence, uh, for your strategy. And then on the design side, what keeps you healthy is um, 28, line five, where you're sharing the heresy about being a fighter for purpose. You're, 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 it's like there is this um, survival mechanism in you where you are here to help people overcome their fear of death. So ultimately, what keeps you healthy is being a voice in the world who's helping people face their fear of death and either either gracefully accepting their death is very soon and imminent or real helping them realize, oh, I could, maybe I'm not supposed to die right now, but either way, it's like you have an innate knowing. Well, so one of the things that I do just to explain to people how correct you are. So the grief work that I do with people is some of the best grief work that you can ever get. And, and anyone who's gone through a grief knows that it's one of the hardest things. All of my people leave their grief groups before anyone else. They're complaining about the people stuck. And I tell them, A, you got to do the guided work with me and do that. And then I'm also a medium. So you just cheated when everybody else didn't have the tools that you had. So, I mean, that's a big, huge part of it is that I really teach people about that we are infinite mm -hmm. and there isn't anything to be afraid of. Right. And then I also have solutions. And so when you have solutions, I mean, of course you're afraid when you're uncertain. If you don't think you can fix something, it's terrifying. That's right. And then if that's you think right. that this is it. And so I also know a lot about how our universe is con connected and our souls. And we, have, we didn't talk about any, any of that in here today. But my knowledge in that is so vast. But that's what you just explained. And your core genius is being the heretic voice for nurturing. So in many ways, you're the beneficial mother. You're here, you're actually designed, as you described, to caretake people, to nurse them without depleting yourself, but nurture them, nourish them into health. And send them out into the world to go do what they're meant to do because it's not about me. It's about me teaching everyone to be their own healer because we are the mutation that we're in. So let me tell everybody my weird theory that I have about human design. I believe that when you completely heal yourself, you get all of your parts, that you light up the whole, the whole, what, do, what, what I forget what that's called. The, the body graph. The body graph. That you will fill in your entire body graph and you don't need someone else with blow and blow gate to complete. You, when you get to the root cause of everything and you heal yourself, you fill out your body graph that we are becoming to where we're self-generating, that we used to have like an, if you studied Lumeria or Atlantis, 
we would have big beans that fueled everything, okay? And then the, all the little, uh, all the beans that were benefiting from that supported the big beans, okay? I'm a big bean, I just am. My energy field is, it. it you are, yeah, I have chills. You are, you're a very big being. It's, and it, you're well, designed I, that way. Well, yeah, I mean, just so everyone knows, I have severe radiation poisoning because my field is enormous. And so I'm getting bombed by radiation all the time. But it's not my job. I'm not supposed to be fixing anyone anymore. I'm not supposed to be processing everyone's traumas anymore. My job is to teach you how to do it yourself. Yes. It's a very uncomfortable transitional phase because I used to be fed and housed and given lots of money just to be big old, you know, spectacular me that's generating everything. I generated the crystals in Atlantis, so they say. So, I mean, I'm a big battery. But now we're in an awkward transition phase. I'm not being supported like I was. I'm still kind of generating everybody and supporting them. But I also have to teach you how to... I am. I'm a big mommy. Yes. I'm feeding you. I'm breastfeeding you. I'm teaching you how to feed and fish and close yourself. And it sucks for me right now as a mom. You know, all the moms that are depleted. That's what we're in right now. I know. That's what I'm and recovering I'm from too. It. Like I got to teach them how to do this because I can't do it for people. I'm going to, I won't make it again. You know, you know, I'm a, I'm a birthing doula right now. Because we're creating new whole human beings. We're creating new body graphs that are fully sufficient. That source energy, there isn't some big cord connecting you to source anymore. I figured out in 2017, I just got that I was supposed to cut that cord, that I was self-generating my own energy now, that it's not this corded system that you're learning how to fuel yourself and be self-generating and self-whole and self-fulfilling. We're all connected and we all need each other, Yeah. but we're all different. That's right. And we're all at different phases of development. And so we, and we need to stop the polarization as well. Stop fighting with each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. Embrace what you have in common, not your differences and love each other and evolve or we are not going to make it. God thank will you. pull the plug and I what we'll leave well i want to thank you for your time today i this love is, you this is extraordinary and and i want to have you back because i want to go down some of these rabbit holes in detail but this is a great start well so thank it's a you. dance too because beth and i both do soul uh soul motion and dancing and moving you can bring your stuff up as well that's what why i well, how i started doing soul motion i was sick of talking and processing my crap and i just wanted to move and i was like oh my god this is a new tool to bring your stuff up yep. but it's fun and then you regenerate it's a great practice it really is thank you my dear i love you i love you Bye. too everyone thanks for another great episode and we'll see you all soon on align to okay. your design bye for okay, now bye. you enjoyed this episode of Align to Your Design? If you did, please grab my free report, Business by Design, at yourpurpose.com and then join our Facebook group, Align to Your Design. See you next time.